Good afternoon. Welcome to Fishing for Bees. So we're at the holding yard here. Again, I know I've been saying it a lot. I feel like I'm late on everything this year. Uh, if you're keeping track this year, this yard here has not had any oxalic acid treatments. It did have formic pro, so I need to get that done. I was gonna do that today, but instead I decided to take this opportunity to put the quilt boxes on. So I've been using quilt boxes for a couple years. Uh, I'm very happy with them. I'm sure, I'm positive that there's other ways of doing it and there's probably more effective ways of doing it. Everything has its pros and cons. Um, I've just had success with these and I keep using them because there's a couple features that I like about them. First of all, on the bottom of these boxes, I have a built-in shim for feeding so that upper entrance they can access it. And then also I have about two inches of room for putting fondant or cakes in. Plus, when they're on top of the colony, I can look inside by taking off the outer cover and the inner cover, look inside and see what's going on. I like that because with the other options, some of the foam boards and stuff like that, you have to actually take the foam board off, pull back uh, your Reflectex, and then you're exposing the top of the colony and um, bees have the potential to get out. And this way I find it just much less intrusive to go in there and check them during the winter, see if I need to slide another fondant in. One of the things we did last year, I uh, was putting a piece of burlap down and then piling the chips on top and kind of pulling the burlap around them just to keep the chips in. I don't like chips falling through on top of the bees during the winter, just debris in their home. I don't like it at all. So this year we went a little bit different. I sourced some burlap bags and we went ahead and made pillows for all the quilt boxes. So these can come out easy. They can be uh, flipped if one, if the bottom side gets wet I can give them a fresh side and then dry that top with these vents on the side and we went ahead and made them for our new boxes too so I did source some more quilt boxes this year I'm very happy with the provider uh, mom's bees up in Fremont if you're in Michigan mom's bees look them up great guy so anyways, we're going to put these on, catch up on some exalic acid vaporization treatments possibly later today. Don't know if I'll film that. I've filmed it for you in the past. When doing this late in the season and you're in a dearth, you know, there's nothing in the environment. You can see that they're very active today. Have a smoker lit. Have your gear on. Your bees could be pleasant and docile all year round and then all of a sudden a switch goes off and uh, they're not happy. And if you start going in here and cracking things open and you find them not happy with no gear on and no smoker, you're gonna quickly not be happy. So smoker gear on when you're playing with your bees in the fall and in a dearth. All right, so here we go. And my smoker went out after that. Recommendation to make sure that one you have one with you and lit. Uh, and you can see they're coming out, right? I knew that was gonna happen. That's why I warned you it was gonna happen. Because there's nothing in the environment. We already got some moisture build up in here. We already got some moisture build up in here. Because of those cold nights. And then it's condensating and freezing and that's the reason for the quilt boxes. 
to absorb that moisture. And that's it. But that's how pissed they, that's how quick they get pissed off in this time of year. Put your gear on. So this one right here, I don't really like the height of it. Um, this is that shakedown swarm we caught. It was huge. I thought I could overwinter it in two, five over five. Turns out they were so strong, they uh, they filled up the third box. We'll take a peek inside, make sure my assumption is still correct. Um, the weights on these is not good. That one's fair, this one's not good. We'll check the other one next. The reason why is I never fed them here. The golden rod in this area was so heavy I thought I could get away with not feeding them. The nice thing about those quilt boxes is that I can easily feed. I can get fondant in there, mountain camp sugar, anything. I mean, it, it, I, once I put the paper down, if I need to add more sugar, I can pour it right through the screen. I never have to go in there and stir them up like you saw in that last one, especially in the winter um, when it's cold and they're not gonna be able to get back in in time before they freeze to death. There's not a lot of bees up here and these frames are not the best as far as drawing out you notice I'm not going in and pulling them out kind of already handcuffed myself with my decision earlier if I was gonna remove the box I should have already done it so we're gonna go with the plan of leaving the box on Unfortunately, this is all extra space that they're going to need to heat during the winter. And uh, that could prove to be problematic, so we'll see about this one. With these quilt boxes, you have options on what kind of material you want to put up here. This is just what I use. I find it works really well. Most important is don't block your vents with your material. You don't want to go all the way up to the top with it. You want good airflow through here. One of the other things with winter preparation is to have good tilt towards the front on your boxes. These have all been taken care of. The other yard needs to be taken care of. So the bees breathe, right? They create warm air, warm moist air. The warm moist air goes to the top, hits, if it was there, the inner cover, condensates, and then has the potential to rain back down on them. So any condensation that happens in here when you tilt them it's going to come to the top run to the front run down the front face board and out the front door tilt on your hives is very very important during the winter regardless of what uh, moisture control system you're using again with these quilt boxes i personally don't believe it's all that much for heat it's about moisture control. The bees are gonna produce enough heat if the population is good 
to survive the winter. They go into a torpor. It's, uh, you know, lethargic, half asleep, hibernation type thing. So they can produce enough heat to survive that and survive the winter, but the moisture is what kills them in the winter, in my opinion. Moisture is terrible. Uh, and personally, I believe that's what kills most of the bees, obviously next to mite management and explosion of mites during the fall and winter. I would expect to see more bees up here than the last box if they have a good population. Which they don't have the greatest population, but everybody could be in that bottom box. One of the problems with the swarms is, you know, you purchase bees early in the spring and you get them all at the same time and you're able to work them all the same. You know, these, these were caught a month and a half or two months apart, various stages of drawn comb, uh, different size swarms, different genetics. It's all over the map, so comparing the colonies isn't necessarily fair to them and not the not the best way of evaluating things you got to take each one on an individual basis you know remember when they were caught uh, this one was was small when it was caught but you know while I'm in here and while I'm at the entrance I'm looking at the bees backs I'm looking for any mites it's obviously not the way to, best way to do your mite count, but you know, when you're in there, pay attention. I'll have to get a new ratchet strap on that one big enough to go all the way around it. There's bees at the entrance. Um, you know, listen, we have cold nights and it's a smaller colony. So, obviously it's not fair to compare it to this one. This one was huge. And boy, they came out in force when I opened that up. So I still need to get some entrance discs on these other two. I do like those during the winter to open and close them. I just gotta get some more hardware for that. So anyways, that's it. That's, that's how I, uh, tuck them in for the winter other than wrapping them with tar paper on three sides and I leave the front exposed. You still want these boxes to breathe. You don't want them so tight. I am reluctant to completely wrap all four sides and batting and plastic. And these boxes still need to breathe in my opinion. So with that, I hope your bees are well. Thanks for watching.